Hey, Pat McCarter with Polaris here, back for another episode of Shop Talk. We got the Turbo R in today, and we're gonna be talking all about control, things like the Max Link suspension, Dynamics DV, and why this thing rides so darn good. All right, so let's dive into control on this Turbo R. So just as a reference point, remember, this rig's 74 inches wide, that's rim to rim, side to side. We got a 96 inch wheelbase front to back. We got a massive 27 inches of usable travel up front, and even bigger 28 out back. So let's bend down here and check out what's going on with this front end. So when we look, we've got these huge boxed and formed, fully welded steel uh, A-arms, both upper and lower. Cool thing about this is with that shock mounting to the lower A-arm, we actually get to put all the strength of the sp suspension loads into the lower arm, which means we designed this arm to be really beefy and we can take a bit of weight out of the upper arm. Because of that, it's gonna be more durable against any accidental trail side contact. The other thing that you'll see here is, is this internal bypass shock. So big upgrade over what you got on the Pro XP, both mechanical and electrical with the Dynamics DV. But the bypass shock, basically if we had one of these cut apart, you'd actually see a tube with inside the outer uh, shell of the shock itself with bypass ports that allow oil to basically circumvent going through the piston as that goes up the stroke. So what that means is that we've got some plusher ride zones down low, and then as that shock compresses, it gets stiffer and stiffer as the piston goes past those bypass ports inside. Uh, and the nice part about that is we can get a progressive rate of damping as that shock is, is uh, being compressed, which means that you get a stiffer ride when you need it more as that shock's running up through the stroke. So the key thing as a rider to remember is that if you load this vehicle with a lot of people in gear, check out the factory manual to see where your preload should be to maintain the factory ground clearance. Because if you start dropping ground clearance, the ride's gonna feel a lot stiffer than it otherwise would. Um, other things that, that are done in the front end, uh, when we think about control and ride, um, you can maybe see it on the opposite side here if you zoom in, but there's actually a steering stop designed into the lower arms here. Um, so that you can't steer too far, and that allows us to keep the uh, joints intact um, as we go. <clears throat> you know, we talked about the hubs, the brakes, the knuckles, all that. Um, the other thing that you can see up here um, is the three-piece stabilizer bar. So there's a giant steel bar running side to side on the vehicle, and we got these trick aluminum, uh, you know, end pieces that connect down to the drop link to the lower arm. The other part that you can see is the tie rod going up to the integrated power steering unit. So the, the Turbo R actually shares an EPS unit with the Pro R, uh, which has got a built-in power steering and rack and pinion setup. So we got some advanced electronics and controls that we'll talk about in a little bit when we dive into the Dynamics DV. So one other thing I didn't mention yet is with this shock tying into the lower control arm, it gives us a couple other benefits on the actual geometry of the front end. So because of that, we actually are able to get a longer shock packaged and lean the angle of that shock a little more vertical, which means it's gonna be closer to one-to-one -one of the wheel going up to how much that shock compresses, meaning we can actually tune those bypass zones a little bit tighter um, to be able to really dial them in for the performance of this vehicle and give you better ride and handling capabilities. Um, so that's another nice thing about uh, the lower, you know, mounting that shock down to the lower control arm is that we get a better motion ratio out of this, you know, inherently in the, in the design of the geometry of the front suspension. So the other thing that you notice is this lower arm actually straddles the half shaft, which means we can center the load on the lower control arm. We don't offset it, so we're not trying to twist the arm as that suspension's going up and down. We're centering that load right on the arm to give it a really good load path for, uh, for, for force distribution. All right, so let's head to the back and find out why do we call this thing a max link, right? What is it the thing, you know, in the back end that gives it that name? So if you look down, <clears throat> there's a big red toe link right here that's running up to the chassis near the front of the uh, trailing arm mount. Uh, but you can see that when it connects to the knuckle, which I've got a, a basically a spare of in my hand here, uh, you know, it straddles this, this bushing right here. And what you notice is that the top and bottom where it mounts to the uh, trailing arm are also on these bushings to allow a little bit of uh, angular movement on this part. And the way this works is that there's a concentric washer that you can see right here. So when that joint gets loosened and you rotate this bolt, the bolt is indexed to this washer and it basically presses on the sides of that slot, which basically will take this whole thing and it'll angle it in and out depending on which way you tighten that or, or rotate that bolt. And then when you tighten the nut, it locks it in place. Really what that's doing is helps control the toe of the back end. So remember toe is, you know, the wheels moving in and out this way. So why do you care about having this toe link running back to this knuckle that can uh, be fixed in place? 
Well, really, it's gonna help reduce bump steer. So when you think about you're driving down, blitzing a set of whoops, and as the wheels are going up and down, instead of having the back end kind of fight in the front, it's gonna stay locked in place and help you track in a straight line, uh, right where you're pointed. You know, if you look at this from a construction methodology, right, you got a trailing arm that mounts in the front, comes back, knuckle mounts here, right, you got that massive five bolt hub in the back, nice set of dual piston brakes. Other nice thing on the uh, radius rods in the back, we do have a standard upper, but we get a super beefy uh, high clearance lower here. So again, you got more ground clearance that you don't have to worry about hitting that on a, a rock or something else on the trail. Uh, so overall, when you think about control, you know, we've got a massive amount of travel on this. And I think we need to jump in and talk a little bit more about Dynamics DV and why that's so awesome and how it works. All right, so what the heck does Dynamics DV even stand for? Well, the DV stands for dual valve. And I'm gonna show you up here on this front shock. <clears throat> We've actually got two valves. We got one for compression and an independent one for rebound control. Cool thing about having those be independent is that we can actually adjust them so that they're both going up both going down or moving opposite one another uh, in any, either direction at any time on all four corners. So Polaris is the only one in the industry that's got independent control of compression and rebound and it's only on machines equipped with Dynamics DV. Nice thing about this tech, so over the years, when you think about Dynamics, right, we've got this you know, active suspension technology that allows you to adjust it from the cockpit, but also you know, is doing things kind of for you as you go to make the ride even better and more stable and comfortable. So on this, instead of just having comfort, sport, and firm, we've actually got four kind of terrain-specific drive modes, adjusting not only the shocks, but the steering as well. Uh, and when we jump in on the inside, I'll show you those four modes and what they look like with, uh, with the uh, ride command screen, so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. We've also added some newer tech. So over the years, you know, we launched this originally. We've had two or three different iterations of controls uh, and software that have come along with numerous hardware iterations. But on this latest and greatest with these internal bypass shocks, we've taken the best technology mechanical shock, we've taken the best electronics and the best controls, and we've coupled them all into one on the Turbo R. Um, so when you look at that, it gives us things like active pitch control. So as you're blitzing whoops, it's actually gonna try and keep the machine from doing this and keep you more flat and level as you go. Um, when you're in rock crawl mode, for instance, we're gonna actually try and angle the machine into the hill as you're climbing up or tilt the back end down as you're coming down. Um, so overall, there's a lot of new visualizations that you can see and we'll show you some of those here in, in just a minute, but really cool tech that makes for an awesome ride experience. So just to remind everybody, now that we're in the cockpit, we got the right hand side of the steering wheel is all about Dynamics DV. So the up and down are gonna change your modes, uh, as you can see on the screen as I'm toggling up and down, and the big red X button is gonna take compression to full firm as long as you hold it down, then it'll bleed off after a couple seconds depending on your speed. So we're gonna start out, I'm gonna go all the way down into the comfort mode, and what you see is it looks like nothing's lit up on any of the four corners. And that's because we basically drop the rebound and compression right out to let those wheels freely float when you're in that, uh, in that comfort mode. The other thing we do is give you a really high level of steering assist, so it's gonna be not as fatiguing when you're driving throughout the day. So some people might say, you know, the steering feels a little more numb, and that's super intentional in this mode, so that it's just really easy when you're, you know, out cruising or, or not uh, driving too aggressively. All right, the next mode that we've got, if you flip up uh, one setting, is gonna get us to the track mode. And what you see here is that we're gonna add a little bit of compression in and a little bit more rebound to actually try and suck the machine down. And as you're going in track mode, as you steer, it's gonna be a bit more aggressive on getting into cornering. And what you actually see is that we adjust, you know, the rebound, uh, we increase it on the inside of the corner, and we increase the compression on the outside while dropping the opposite things. So in other words, I'm turning left right now, I've got high compression on the outside, I've got low compression on the inside, I've got high rebound on the inside and low rebound on the outside. So basically all that's working together to try and keep the body flat so that I don't feel the interior of the vehicle roll and it's gonna be kind of most aggressive uh, in this track mode. So think of this as like short course racing or real aggressive tra trail riding where it's not super whooped out. You know, it's a pretty smooth set of tra trail section that you're really just, you know, slot car race style going, going through there. So we'll recenter the steering here. As we go up, the next mode we get into is uh, rock mode. And what you see here is that we add a bunch of compression and we drop the rebound out. So what we're doing here is we're actually trying to get the wheels to sink down and buy a little more ground clearance as we get into this mode. We're also gonna give you a real high level of steering assist, very similar to what you've got in the uh, comfort mode. 
and these rock features are really set up for sub 15 mile an hour operation. So after you get above that, it basically defaults to the comfort mode if you're say between rock crawl sections um, so that you get that nice easy going ride and then when you get back slowed down into the rocks, you kind of go back into the rock mode. So when you toggle that button all the way up to the top, you can see you get into Baja, and what you've got here is a bit of compression on all four corners, and then we add a little bit of rebound into the back and we take it out to the front. And what that's gonna do is actually pitch the front end of the vehicle up so that you get a light nose to help when you're bouncing through you know, rough whoops that you actually kind of run nose high. Um, so it gives the front end a light feel, but it helps the wheels track down into those whoops so it keeps the tire contacting the ground better. So if you think back to when you were a kid and, or maybe you knew somebody that was a BMX racer, you know, the slow guys always looked cool because they were jumping over the jumps, but the fast guys always tracked the ground and they kept pedaling the whole time. That's really what this helps in this uh, Baja mode is to keep those wheels on the ground so that you can power through and keep motoring the whole time. Uh, from a steering assist level, Baja is going to give you a bit uh, less assist than comfort, but uh, a little bit more than, say, the track mode. So it's going to be a really kind of neutral feeling, but it's really meant for high-speed operation through kind of the roughest terrain is where you want to use that Baja setting. So the other thing you guys may have noticed on the screen is that the mode that it was entering is actually shown here in the middle. So if I hit the brake pedal, you'll see it says braking. If I turn the steering wheel, it says cornering. There's a couple other ones that I can't really demonstrate here in the shop that you might experience while out riding. But the other thing that's cool is that these modes stack, right? So as I hit that brake, you can see I'm adding some rebound in the back, a bunch of compression in the front, right, to try and keep the nose from diving and keep it flat. But if I throw it into a corner, I'm actually adjusting not only the side to side, but also front to back now as well. So Dynamics DV, we're actually doing things on all four corners that are different as you stack these modes up during real life driving. So remember, not only is it what you've done on the steering wheel set in kind of a base level of damping, but as you drive, we're reading inputs a couple hundred times a second to be able to adjust each of the four corners in real time at that same speed, and it's way faster than you could ever adjust the clicker manually. So one of the other cool features that Dynamics DV has enabled is something called active pitch control. So it used to be on previous models that had Dynamics, if you were at a dead stop doing an acceleration run and you push the accelerator all the way to the floor, you get an anti-squat anti, uh, technology, and when you hit the brakes while driving, you get anti-dive. Anti well, the nice thing is on this now, we actually get those real time as you're going on, off, throttle, and brake. So if you scroll back to the screen here, what you'll see is that if I push the pedal all the way to the floor, you'll see acceleration pops up, and a couple of these are moving around. But if I hit brakes, you'll see that I can actually go between cornering or braking and acceleration real time. And all four corners, depending on what mode I'm in, are actually going to adjust real time. So instead of just doing this from a standstill, if I'm going on off the gas, on off the brake, I can actually help keep the body flat instead of doing this as I'm going through uh, due to my inputs from the pedals. All right, so what's cool about the airborne detection on Dynamics DV? Well, there's really two things. Number one, when this vehicle senses that it's going, you know, like negative Gs, it's actually going to drop the rebound out and crank the compression so the wheel falls as fast as possible and it's ready to absorb that impact when you come back and, and touch the ground. The other cool thing is that we've actually got something called landing stabilization. So as you hit the ground, instead of the vehicle compressing, bouncing back up and kind of doing that a couple times, we're actually going to reverse the shocks in, in uh, compression and rebound to try and catch you on the upswing so that it damps that event really quickly and you're back to being flat instead of bouncing afterward. Where this comes in really handy is when you're blitzing through really big whoops, you can go at speeds and just giggle while you're driving through them because uh, the machine is so damn capable at getting you through. Overall, airborne and landing stabilization are some of the coolest features that come along with Dynamics DV. All right, so bouncing back into the rock mode, one of the other cool features that we've added for Dynamics DV is something we call angle-based damping. And the beauty of this, when we start out in rock mode, we're actually going to increase the compression and drop the damping out on re the rebound stroke so that we can try and buy ground clearance. But as you start going up a hill, what we're actually going to do is drop the compression down and increase rebound in the front and do the opposite in the back. We're going to increase the compression and drop the damping to try and lean the vehicle into the hill and the opposite when we're going down. So we're basically going to try and you know, position it so the back end squats and the front end's a little higher coming down. Uh, again, so you can get, you know, maximize your stability while rock crawling at those slow speeds and uh, not have to worry as much about what angle the vehicle is, you know, going up those slopes. Overall, super cool tech when you're going slow and rock crawling. All right, so remember, we talked to you about uh, standard dynamics a few episodes ago, but just remember, all the improvements we made come along with Dynamics DV as well from a reliability perspective. 
So things like, you know, a fully sealed suspension controller. We've got sealed buttons here on the steering wheel. You know, we've got those nice uh, rebuildable sealed connectors at all four shocks with the great routing features that the guys have put on. You know, overall, if you ever have an issue with this, it always defaults to a safe mode, might be a little stiffer than you're used to, um, but it's really easy to diagnose and repair. I think one of the other things that we should quickly touch on is the kind of the spring and tune of the uh, Turbo R. So from the factory, we've actually calibrated the shock and spring package to be stiffer than you're used to on previous models of Razor. And that's because we actually know how many people are adding passengers, adding accessories, and adding gear. So if you're riding a machine bone stock with nothing on it, it may actually feel a little stiff, but once you get it loaded down like you would while you're riding, it should soften up and ride beautifully comfortably, uh, and you don't have to worry about losing a bunch of ground clearance now because we have you know, accounted for that in the uh, stock spring and, and shock package. So hopefully you guys like this episode of Shop Talk. Make sure you click uh, like and subscribe and leave us comments on what you want to see next.